Yeah, I was um, coming out of uh, the tube station, the underground in London, and uh, climbing the steps in Oxford Street, that busy, one of the busiest streets, country, the world, who do I see but my sister-in-law, Evelyn. Now, Evelyn had emigrated to Australia 12, 13 years before. Here she was. And she went, shh, Jimmy, don't tell me. I'm coming up to Rochdale this year. Oh, right. Fine enough. After I uh, skipped along to see my agent, Phyllis Rance, who was in Regent Street then. Climbed the stairs to the office. How are you, Phyllis? We're going to a show tonight. I said, you'll never guess who I've just seen uh, in Oxford Street, coming up uh, from the underground. She said, who is it? My wife's sister, Evelyn. Really? Yeah, and Evelyn's meant to be in Australia. <coughs> well, little did I know, um, Phyllis then excused herself and then rang uh, the team, um, that this is your life team, and said, Jimmy's just saw us, but I don't think he suspects. And, da, 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 da. and then to cut it off sideways, they were able to, I still didn't know, but what the research team had told me is we wanted to get Evelyn from Australia, but she's not well, so she won't be coming. So May thought she wasn't coming. So at the end of the program, I was able to turn it right around and say, um, you know, um, May had said, it's a shame my, my sister can't make it tonight. She's in Australia. I said, well, you thought so, but she's here tonight. She's flown over and May started to cry and it was a very emotional time, you know. Uh, the book was Letters from My Mammy, and uh, I started to get a bit, you know, the car was going, the, the, the guy was playing uh, music very loud, the, the chauffeur, my agent was talking very loud, and it was all as if, you know, this isn't, well, I'm trying to listen, and you know, normally you'd say, could you turn that down, taxi man, and he, he wouldn't do that, and I thought, well, I'm going to see Evelyn, and I'm, all these things, and then just as we turned the corner at the building site, who turns up in the, uh, Bob the Builder, the hard hat? Eamon himself with a red book. And I thought, it's me, I'm going to be the subject. Wow. It sort of said that you've sort of arrived, you've done your, a little bit in the industry, you've, you've, you've given something to it, and uh, and all the friends that came on, like Roy Hood and Mick Miller and, and uh, Bob Todd and all the people in show business who, who came on and said nice things. I was just overwhelmed with the whole thing. You know, it was, it was beautiful. Well, I remember it. I turned the Christmas lights on in Preston a few days after it, and the place was just heaving. It was in mass, you know. I mean, it just got massive figures. You know, people loved it. And uh, Eamon's wholesale, genuine uh, approach, uh, warm people warmed to that, you know, uh, because they, they, he, he was filled with inherent goodness, you know. People can, can, you know read into the soul really and that and, uh, and so he, he was quite revered and loved and the fact that uh, my particular show was the last one he watched when he was in hospital was it's very emotive for him I feel sort of sort of spiritually a bond and I actually wrote to his wife Grania and, and you know told her that but he obviously he wrote to me like he did to everybody and said was thanks and you know um but yeah it's a bond that I do feel yeah I do and, and the inflective moments I do I think that 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 is absolutely wonderful for this gentleman who made such a mark in those early television days um yeah I do very much so we were in Hulls and uh, the word came through and uh, uh, May came City Simmons passed away and uh, then obviously newspapers sort of rang and I'd give them the, you know, the story about it was just so beautiful. One of the funny stories was I had a friend called Brendy O'Gorman from Belfast. I grew up with Brendy O'Gorman. And after the actual show, we were all in the green room and him and obviously mixed and mingled and chatted with everybody. Because he did that. That's the great thing, you know. He, 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 um, everybody was important. And Brendan O'Gorman had a camera and he, he went up and he said, Eamon, here. He handed them a camera. He said, take a photograph of Jimmy and me. <laughs> so actually Eamon took a photograph of him. You know, instead of saying, right, Jimmy, take a photo. Or can I take a photo? <laughs> or Eamon, I'll get the middle. Jimmy's there. Somebody take that. He actually got Eamon to take a photo. <laughs> so that's, that's become folklore in Belfast. Everybody talks about that on the, on the road. You know, my... my Two brothers were on it who have since passed away, so that's that. That's very, very emotional to see them and even friends, chums who I grew up with are not with us anymore. And um, and you know the, the amazing thing, I went home to my sister's birthday uh, a few months ago in Belfast, 
because uh, she was 75. And, and we went and had lunch with my sister-in-law. And guess what was on? She was playing the This Is Your Life. She'd got it transferred from video to DVD. And, tell, and all, all the neighbours were in. So it's it's like a, a home movie now. It, 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 that does the, the test of time among your family, you know? It, it, it's, it's beautiful and heartwarming at the same time. Oh, one of the best things. What to be to be sort of there. I remember my brother saying once to my wife, right about the sort of, or was it after the recording or something? You know, was it a bit soon for him? And, and my wife said, well, but, but John, you, you've got to take everything when it's there because none of us know. And, and that was p pathetic. Yeah, in a way, what mm -hmm. she was saying. Mm -hmm. She don't. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if the people are gracious enough to say, here's the thing, then, then you take it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm.